Hey guys, welcome to section 3.9. In this section, we'll talk about graphs and systems of inequalities. Let's get started. So what we've done in the past is we've talked about linear equalities, and I'm going to try to emphasize the difference between equations and inequalities, or equalities and inequalities in two variables. So this is a linear equation in two variables. Equation because it has an equal sign, linear because the exponent or the degree of each of the variables is only one, two variables because you see you know you have x and you have y you have two variables just as a friendly reminder this is also in slope intercept form and if we wanted to graph this line uh, quite easily there's a couple of different ways to do it but we could have just plotted the y-intercept 5 right there and then using the slope we can do a rise over run dance so we can rise by three units to get to eight and then run by one to get to one comma eight so this is my first point, or this is my first point, this is my second point, I can connect the two dots to make a line. I could have also graphed this line by using intercepts. So the y-intercept I already know is five. I could have set the y equal to zero to find the x-intercept, and then that point would have been something down here. So I could have connected the dots in the same fashion. So those are the two ways, uh, hopefully you remember, on how to graph equations of straight lines or linear equalities. A couple other things to remember, that all the solutions to this equation are points that are on this line itself. So if you have a point right here, it's a solution. If you have a point right here, it's a solution. Now what happens if you pick a point right here, a point that is not on the line? Well, that point is not a solution. This is going to be in contrast with what we're about to see next. So uh, again, to put things in a more algebraic framework, if we take a look at the same equation, we have two points. Are these two points solutions or not? In other words, are they on this line or not? So we've done this before, but just for the sake of review, let's plug in these points. If we plug in three comma one into this equation, we can simplify, 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 and we get one equals 14. Because this is a false statement, we can say that this is not a solution, and three comma one, three comma one would be somewhere here, we can say, hey, this is definitely not on the line. Versus one comma eight. If we were to plug it in, blah, 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 plug it in, you get eight equals eight, and that means that one comma eight is a solution, because we get a true statement here. And if it's a solution, it must be on the line. Now, we could have just said, hey, that, that's the second point we got by doing the rise over run dance. But hopefully this also proves to you, or at least reminds me, reminds you how you can determine if points are solutions or not. All you have to do is simply plug them in for the respective coordinates and see if you end up getting a true statement or a false statement. If you get a false statement, it is not a solution. It's not on the line. And if you get a true statement, it is a solution. And the point is on the line. And this is exactly what I just said. We can say that a point is a solution if when we plug it into an equation, we get a true statement. So if you get something like 5 equals 5, negative 14 equals negative 14, 3 over 4 equals 3 over 4, we can say that the point is a solution. The same is the case for inequalities as well. A point is a solution if when we plug it in, we get a true statement. Now with inequalities, things get slightly messier because you don't have an equality in the middle. So five is less than 10. That's a true statement because five is indeed less than 10. 10 is greater than one. That's a true statement as well because 10 is more than one. Five is less than or equal to five. That's a true statement as well because we're saying or equal to. Five is less than or equal to. So five could either be less than five or it could be equal to five. So this is a true statement. Uh, similarly, negative seven is less than negative three. Negative seven is smaller than negative three. So we agree that this is a true statement. A couple of things to remember as we get into graphs. Whenever you have a less than or greater than sign, 
So with these two, we always make a dotted line when we're graphing stuff. And you'll understand, well, I'll explain this in a bit. For less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we make a solid line. And finally, we shade the region that contains the solutions. And the easiest way to do this is to just pick a test point. I put this in red because this is the easiest way to actually mess this question up, is students' reluctance to do a test. The test point is the easiest way to determine which way you have to shade. Do you shade up and to the left or down and to the right? Or uh, when you draw the line or when you see the graphs, you'll understand what region we're talking about. So let's jump into an, uh, a couple of, I guess, guidelines for us. Uh, to graph inequalities or even systems of inequalities, the first thing we do is actually graph the equation. So temporarily, just for a little while, we actually ignore the inequality. So if the question had said, y is greater than x plus 1, what we would first do is graph the equation y equals x plus 1. And we can do this as we did at the beginning of this talk with the rise over run dance by finding the y-intercept and then going, uh, going and finding the second point based on the slope. Or we can make a table of values. Uh, we can plot the intercepts and uh, just connect the two dots. The second thing is once you've graphed the equation, you change it to a dotted line if you have a less than or equal to sign. Or, sorry, a less than or greater than sign. Remember here, if you have a less than or greater than, we make a dotted line. Or with these two symbols, we make a dotted line. And if we have a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we just leave it as it is. So, and then the last portion or the last, uh, I guess, guideline is we should shade the region that represents the solution. The only caveat is that the test point that you choose, it cannot be on the line itself. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first thing is we're being asked to gra uh, graph y is greater than 3x minus 2. So the first thing we do, again, the guidelines tell us, is to graph the equation. So instead of graphing the greater than sign uh, or the greater than inequality, we just change it to an equality and graph this. So y is equal to 3x minus 2. I know my y-intercept is negative 2. I can go up three and to the right by one, and that'll give me the second point. So I can connect these two dots and get this as the equation. Now, because I don't have a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to, this line needs to be changed to a dotted line. So uh, this is really just drawn for, uh, for reference. Once you have the two dots, you should really think about what type of line you need to draw. So once you've connected the two dots, it becomes harder to, to kind of erase little portions of it. But once you have these two dots, you can just say, okay, I'm gonna draw a dotted line connecting between these two points. And again, that's because it's a greater than or a less than. Now that we've drawn a, a dotted line, the next thing we need to know is which region to shade. So this region is up and to the left of the line and this region is down and to the right of the line. And the easiest way to figure this out is to pick a test point. The point cannot be on this line itself. So what you cannot do is pick zero comma negative two or one comma one. Those points would be illegal or even, you know, maybe this point two comma one, two, three, four. So if that point is on this line, we cannot choose that. The safest thing to do, or the easiest thing to do, I personally just choose the origin. So as long as the line doesn't pass through the origin, I choose the origin as my test point. Now, if the line does pass through the origin, just pick another point that you know for a fact is not on the line. So we take the origin and we plug it into the inequality to test whether we get a true statement or a false statement. So zero is y is greater than three times zero minus two. And simplifying this, three times zero is simply zero. Zero minus two is negative two. So we get zero is greater than negative two. And this is a true statement. That means that the region that our test point came from gave us a true statement. 
all the points in this region will give us true statements, meaning all of these points will be solutions. So had 0, 0, the origin, given us a false statement, then all the points on the other side would have given us true statements. So it's very binary, and it's quite easy in that it either works, and if it doesn't, well, then you shade the other side. So if you get a true statement with your test point, you shade the side that the test point is on. So because the origin is to the left and up, you shade this entire region. Now, if the origin had not worked, it, it had given 5 is greater than 7, then you would have said, OK, well, the origin doesn't work. Let me go shade on the other side. So here we see that I shaded the left-hand side up and above to the line. So this region all the way up to infinity, this region all the way up to infinity, this region all the way down to negative infinity, and this little triangular piece here all of these regions get shaded. And what that means is all the points in this region, in this shaded region, are actually solutions to this inequality. Now the points on the line themselves are not solutions. And that's why we made this dotted. So if you look at the inequality again, we have y is greater than 3x minus 2. So if you pick the point negative 2 comma 0, uh, 0 comma negative 2, which is actually on the line itself, if you were to plug it in here, you would end up getting uh, 0 is greater, or negative 2 is greater than negative 2. That's false. So that's why we make this a dotted line to indicate that, hey, uh, this is the boundary, but the boundary does not include the solutions. Now, there's a couple of points that I chose here just to see whether we could have gotten the same answer if we had chosen those points instead of the origin. So if we were to choose the point negative 1, 1, which is on, on this side of the line to the left, we end up getting a true statement. So I, I'll let you verify this, but you end up getting negative 1 is greater than negative 5, which is true. So we could have said, OK, I'm going to shade this side. So 0, 0 is not anything special. It just makes life easier in terms of computations. We could have also done the same thing with negative 2 comma 4, which is negative 2 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis. If we had taken this as our test point, we also get 4 is greater than negative 8, which is a true statement. So you don't have to do more tests. The only reason I'm doing more is to prove to you that you don't have to choose the origin. You could have chosen negative 1 comma 1. You could have chosen negative 2 comma 4. You could have chosen this point, 1, comma, uh, 4, 5, 6, 1, comma, 6. And all of that would have told you is that, hey, everything to the left of this line is to be shaded. All these points satisfy this inequality. So this inequality, because there's an infinite number of points in this region, will have an infinite number of solutions. Now, if you were to take a point to the right of uh, the line, let's say 2 comma negative 1, and plug it in, we end up getting negative 1 is greater than 4, which is obviously false. Negative numbers cannot be greater than positive numbers. So let's say that you, know, you draw this line, you make it dotted, and then the first point you choose to be your test point is this one. Well, when you plug this point in, you get a false statement. That means don't shade on this side. Shade on the other side. So either way, regardless of which test point you pick or which side the test point is on, you end up getting that up and to the left is the shaded region, meaning that's where all the solutions are. Let's take a look at an example where we have a less than or equal to. So we have 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 6. Again, the rules stay or the guidelines stay the same. In order to graph this, because I'm not in slope-intercept form, what I can do is I can find the intercepts. So to graph the equation, I can say, hey, if x is equal to 0, I can find the y-intercept. And I'll let you verify that this algebra makes sense. So pause the video, convince yourself that it is indeed passing through the point 0, comma, negative 3. And then here, if y is set equal to 0, that means we're finding the x-intercept, because that's how we do it we get that the line passes through 2 comma 0. So we have two points, 0 comma negative 3, 2 comma 0, 
I can connect the two dots and get a straight line. So this is the graph of 3x minus 2y equals 6. Now notice that because this is a less than or equal to, I can leave this as a solid line. I don't have to change it to a dotted. I only have to change it to dotted if this were a less than or greater than. So, oh, right here. Uh, since the inequality is a less than or equal to, we do not change it to a dotted line. We can just write it as it is. Now, the next thing we have to do is figure out which side to shade. So are the solutions all on this side or are the solutions all on this side? So again, the origin is a nice easy point to choose because it's not on our line. So if we were to plug in 0 comma 0 into this inequality, remember the point, the test point always gets plugged into the inequality. The only reason we're going to the equation or the equality is in order to be able to graph it. So if we were to plug in 0 comma 0 in here, 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0, all this would just be 0 is greater than or equal to 6. So we get 0 is greater than or equal to 6. This is obviously a false statement. That means that the side that the origin is on, which is up and to the left, which is this whole region, this side does not contain the solutions. So we need to shade the other side. Meaning, 0 comma 0, since it was not a solution, we do not shade this side. This is the region that we shade. And this is also the region that contains all the solutions. Now compare this or contrast this with the solution to the other equation or the other inequality. The points on this line were not solutions. So you'll see that I, I tried to get as close as I could uh, to this line without actually touching it because none of the points on here are solutions. Remember, if we plugged in a point on the line, we got a false statement. Versus here, if you do pick points on the line, let's say 2 comma 0. Let's say we plug in 2 comma 0. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 times 0, well, 2 times 0 is just 0. 6 is greater than or equal to 6. That actually makes this a true statement. So that's why all the points in this yellow region plus the points on this line. Every single one of them is actually a solution. And this is why we keep this a solid line versus here we make it a dotted line to say, hey, none of these points are solutions. So up until now, we've seen examples of inequalities by themselves. But now what happens if we have a system of inequalities? Well, systems of inequalities have uh, a little more spice to them compared to their boring, I guess, neighbors, uh, systems of equalities or systems of equations. Here we have to have a connecting word in the middle. The connecting word could either be or, or it could be and. Now, if it's or, one or both inequalities must be satisfied for the point to have a solution, for the point to be a solution. So if I were to say, hey, you have to go to you, I, you can either go to Publix or you can go to the beach. Now, if you go to Publix, you're making that statement true because you said, well, I only asked you to go to one or the other. But what happens if you go to both the Publix and the beach? Well, that would still be true because I, I only said one or both must be satisfied. So if you just go to Publix, you're satisfying my requirement. If you just go to the beach, I'm happy as well. And if you do both, Excellent. In order to figure out which region to shade for an or compound inequality, I want you to look for what is covored. So instead of covered, it's a silly way of writing covered, and I'll explain why this is important later. With and statements, both inequalities must be satisfied. You don't have a choice. So if someone were to say, hey, you have to go to Publix and you have to go to the beach, you have to do both things. If you only do one, you have not satisfied the conditions given to you. Here, we have to look for an overlap. So here is a system of, an in, uh, system of inequalities. We have y is greater than negative 2x plus 3 or y is greater than or equal to 3 halves x minus 1. 
So again, before we get started, remember that because this is just greater than, it needs to have a dotted line. And because this is greater than or equal to, it needs to be a solid line. Or means we're looking for what is covered, covered. So to graph this line, we can change this in our heads to y equals negative 2x plus 3, which is pretty easy to graph. We go up 3 on the y-axis, that's the y-intercept. And then we go down 1, or down 2, and over 1, because the slope is negative 2. So we go down 2, and then to the right by 1, and this is my second point. And now I draw a line, but it needs to be a dotted line, because this is just greater than. On the other hand, we have uh, y equals 3 halves x minus 1. That means we go down 1 on the y-axis, and then the slope is 3 halves, so I go up 3, and then over 2 up three over two. So this gives me the other line. And be, this is solid because I have a greater than or equal to. Now the question becomes, well, for each one of these lines, which side do I shade? And that's where the test point comes in. So first, let's look at the white line, this one. Uh, the origin is not on this line, so that works quite well as our test point. Zero is greater than negative two times zero plus three. This whole thing is zero. Zero is greater than three, or zero plus three. Th zero plus three is simply three. Zero is greater than three is a false statement. That means the side that the origin is on do not shade that side. That's the wrong side. We have to shade the other side. So again, notice that I'm getting very close to the line, but I'm not touching the dotted line because none of these points are solutions to that equation or to that inequality. And we have to do the same exact thing for the orange line, but notice that the origin is not on the orange line either. So I could just use the origin again. So if we were to use the test point zero comma zero, you can plug it in here and eventually you would get zero is greater than or equal to negative one, which is a true statement. So that means we shade the same side as the origin. So since the origin is right here, I have to shade everything up and to the left of this line, including the line. So notice here, I left a little gap to indicate that this portion is not included in the solutions. Here I didn't leave, I tried to not leave a gap at all, ignore this little schmutz here. But I tried to get super close to the line so you notice that the line itself, all the points on the line are solutions as well. And now I shaded everything in this region. So the blue line or the blue region takes care of all the solutions in this region. The orange or the peach region takes care of all the solutions in this region. Now the last thing is we have to come up with one answer. This is just the work. This is not the, an the final answer to the question. The final answer to the question is to graph this whole region. We need the region or we need all the points that satisfy this or satisfy this, not just one at a time. So here we notice that since the problem requires us to find the solution with or, we shade what is covered, and this is where that point comes in. So if you notice here, coming back here, the only region that's not covered or covered is this bottom triangular region. Everything else, this is covered, this is covered, this is covered twice, but it's just covered. This region is covered, this is covered, this is covered, this is covered. So that means everything here is a solution. So if you were to take points, all the points in the shaded region are solutions to that system. So if you were to take this point, let's say one, two, three, four, five, comma, two. 5 comma 2 would be a solution to both the yellow uh, the orange line and the white line. So let's try it. 5 comma 2. So the 2 goes here. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. 2 is greater than negative 7. That's a true statement. So that means that this point is a solution to the first inequality. And it is because we also shaded that region. For the next one, we can take uh, 2 comma 5 again. Why? It would be 5. 3 halves, or 
sorry, the point was five comma two, my bad. So two is greater than or equal to three over two times five minus one. Three over two times five is 15 over two. And just to do a rough calculation, 15 over two is about 7.5. Well, it actually is 7. Point. Yeah, 7.5 minus one is 6.5. And the left-hand side is two. Two is greater than 6.5. Well, that's not helpful because that's a false statement. So this point is not a solution to both systems. The reason why that's not an issue for us is because this was an or statement. Remember with or, one or both inequalities must be satisfied. But if only one is satisfied, we're good. That means the, the whole system is satisfied. So if we find a point here, even though it doesn't satisfy the orange line, because it satisfies the white line, we're good. Or means every single point in this region is going to satisfy one or the other system, or one or the other inequality, and therefore satisfy the entire system. Uh, natural question might be, well, what happens if we have an and statement? The cool thing is you do nothing differently. The only difference is going to be the region that you shade as the answer. So the procedure is exactly the same. You still graph both the same lines. And these two lines are exactly the same because I didn't change the questions. And then you shade, you go about shading the individual re regions the exact same way you did in the past example. The next one, you do the exact same thing. But now we're asking a different question. Because the problem is an and problem, we actually have to share the shade, the overlap. So here, I put the blue one a little bit larger so that you guys could see where the overlap is. The blue region is everything up and to the right of this line. The peach region is everything up and to the left of this line. Now, from here to here to here and all this region, the only color that's there is the peach one. From here all the way to here, all the way down is only blue. But you'll notice that I left this up here. This tri upper triangular region is where the overlap is. And that is going to be our solution for the system, excuse me, for the system with an and in the middle. So all the points in this upside down triangle in this shaded region are the solutions to this system. So if we're looking for an or, just to reiterate, we're looking for wherever we are covered. And in this case, we are covered everywhere except for this little region down here. So for or, the answer would be everything. With an and statement, we're looking for an overlap. So the only region that we color as our final answer is the overlapped region. So we still have to do this to get our answer, but this is our final answer. Similarly, if we were to go back to the previous question, we still had to shade these individual regions in order to get to this as our final answer. That's it. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice evening.